What's good everybody? Just visiting some old logic sessions here. Dope tune. What is this? Hopefully it's a dope tune. Vocals. Little flute. Welcome to Legacy Studios Nash. What's up everybody? My name is Paul, but you can call me Paul the Fit. And in today's video, guess what? We are talking Logic. Earlier in the week, I made a tutorial on the basics of Pro Tools. Logic 10.7 is here. It is strictly available for Apple products. And if you're watching this, you're already probably becoming a super producer and engineer. Today, I wanna to show you the basics of this program, how to get it, how to get things set up, some of the ins and outs. Later this week, we're making a beat with Apple Loops. If you're ready, let's go. What's good, my fellow engineers, musicians, and super producers, Paul the Fifth here. Today's topic, Logic Pro. 10.7 is available now through the App Store. Real quick, before we get started, letting the hair down, going back to last year's theme. As you can tell, I've got drums here at the apartment. Real quick word, I wasn't getting any return on the investment at the studio, so I decided to bring everything home in an attempt to save money to get myself a home within the next year. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Logic is strictly for Apple products, so if you've got any kind of a Mac, maybe one of the new M1 Pros, you can get it in your app store. I pulled up an Apple page here. You can get Logic Pro for free for 90 days by clicking on this link here. You simply download it, they send you an email, and you're good to go. If you want to purchase it, you click buy. It'll take you directly to your app store. It's $1.99, and in my opinion, as well as many producers and engineers around the country, this is an incredible value for everything that comes with. So in today's video, we just looked at where you can get Logic, its price point, the free trial. We're gonna take a look at advanced settings, preferences, and I.O. Taking a dive into key commands, I've got a lot that I want to share with you. And again, like the Pro Tools video, we'll talk about how to save things to your external hard drive. And then I want to show you the layout and basics of Apple's Logic. Let's go ahead and dive into this. Okay, so if you just got the free trial or you purchased Logic, I keep my dock on the left-hand side of my computer instead of down here on the bottom. I just find that for me, it's a better workflow. This is what the Logic icon looks like right here. It'll say Logic Pro. We double click on that. For the very first time, while it's loading, it may have you install the sound library. That's upwards of 76 gigs. So make sure you've got plenty of space for that. Before we actually even create a session, there's a few things that I wanna mention. If we go to Logic Pro Preferences, General, here's your general settings, audio. This is where you can set your IO, kind of like in Pro Tools, my output or input device you can change here. Right now, I'm gonna use my MacBook Pro microphone. And if you wanna change things, you can do like the speakers. If you make the change, then you have to hit apply. So I'm gonna make the output the speakers, apply. Cool, there we go. Recording, MIDI, display, score, movie, automation, control surfaces, my info, then advanced. This is what I really wanted to make sure that you have turned on. Click this here, it says enable complete features make sure that you have that turned on because that's kind of like in the pro tools where you clicked on the little down arrow and you had all the things turned on there that's similar to that this is going to allow you to do 
more overall within your DAW. And then if we go back up to Logic, Sound Library. I've already got mine downloaded, but you can download Essential Sounds and download all available sounds. So these are gonna be your loops, your patches, and all the built-in instrumentations that come built-in within Logic. If you have any issues, you can reinstall Open Sound Library Manager or relocate Sound Library. Real quick, I wanna talk about key commands. If we click on Logic and then come down here to Key Commands, you have Edit or Presets. I keep mine on US, and you have some other available options here. If you go to edit, this is where you can take a look at the key commands, what their actual key commands are and what they coincide with. Here's the list of default key commands. Here's all, used, key, touch bar, unused, customized, multi-used, and conflicts. To keep the video as simple as possible, I'm not gonna dive into creating your own custom key commands today. That's for another video. So today we'll focus on what Logic's pre-built key commands are. Now let's create a session. We can do this in a couple ways, similar to Pro Tools. If we go to File, you can go to New or New from Template. But let's just do this one here. Key command is Shift Command N. Type the track, software instrument, audio, drummer track, which is unique here. There's a list of pre-built drummers that play beats in different styles. External MIDI, guitar, or bass. So we'll create four tracks, and then what it'll do is it'll put them as input one, two, three, and four. And the output is output one and two. This right here shows you that our device is our MacBook Pro microphone. This shows our output is our speaker. Create. The other way of doing things, file a new, you'll see new project, empty project, recent, start a guide, tutorials. This is really cool. Logic has pre-built tutorials, so if you need some assistance or questions, they're all right there. Live loops, that's what we're gonna be doing this coming week. We're gonna be making a beat with loops, quick sampler, drum machine designer, and step sequencer. Demo projects. This here is so cool. There's only one in Pro Tools, but you have Ocean Eyes by Billie Eilish, Lil Nas X Montero, Spatial Audio Montero, and then a Spatial Audio Demo Grid. So you've got some huge name artists that have their actual sessions in here. So you can look at the ins and outs of these sessions, how they were built and how they were mixed. Project templates and then my templates. Right now, let's just do a new project, empty project, choose. Audio for create, cool. Logic does things a little differently in the beginning than Pro Tools. It has you create your session, then you can save it. Here's what we do. If we go to file, save as, We'll call this Logic Basics Toot for tutorial. We'll save that to my Legacy Studios hard drive. We'll call this LBT for, Le for Logic Basics Tutorial. Create, save. There we go. Simple as that. And my suggestion to you on saving things to your internal or external hard drive is saving things by the topic of the session so this is the logic basic tutorial, possibly putting in the date and the keyword. So that way, if you wanna go find things later, you are able to do that smoothly and successfully. So let's walk through this from left to right. Up here, we've got our tracks. What is this? This is your library. This is where all your patches and all your sounds live for when you plug in a MIDI instrument. Moving on, this is your inspector. So the inspector shows you a couple of views. So this coincides with what's in your audio track. If I click on audio one, I have a highlighted. If it's soloed, you'll see it solos down here. If I move the volume fader up and down, it does that on the audio view. If I mute that, same thing. If I turn the volume down here, there you go. If I hit record, it records and enables it down there. So that's cool to have on from time to time. Then this, the question mark, what is that? So this is your quick help button. If you have any questions on anything in Logic, this is where you can go, you can type in a question, you can type in what your question is, maybe types of tracks, audio, feedback, whatever you want knowledge on, it shows you that there. So this gives you some more menu items, you've got your articulation, track zoom, note repeat, spot erase, some more detailed options. We're not gonna dive in too deep into that today. Right here is your smart controls. Key command for this is B. This is your mixer window. Key command for this is X, back and forth. Something you can do to pull up other tabs. Command one pulls up another view here. Command two pulls up another mixer. Just be careful because if you do that multiple times, you'll have multiple links up and 
logic and you will get confused right here this is cool because once you have actual audio in here so this here actually allows you to do some surgical movements and then our transport kind of like in pro tools rewind fast forward stop play and record right here we have your bar and beat your tempo defaults to 120 on most DAWs. You want to change it. To change your tempo, you don't have to turn off your conductor. You just simply click in here, change that to 75. Boom. Right here's your time signature, three, four, 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 five, four. We'll keep it on four on the floor. Your key, and right here is Beats and Projects, Beats Project Large. I need that because my old eyes. And then right here is your tuner, and this is your solo. This here, your one, two, three, four coincides with your metronome, which is this right here. It's kind of hard to see, but if you click on this little down tab, you'll get some options. You have simple mode, click while recording only during counting, and click while playing the metronome settings. Here's your overall volume, like your master fader. Right here, event, marker, tempo, signature. Under event, you can put notes about your session. So if you use a certain type of mic on the intro of something, Maybe you change your mic within the chorus. You can put all those notes there. Right here, this is all your loops. So if you go to instrument, you can search by instrument. You can search genre. I like to do hip hop, hip hop R&B, descriptions, process, grooving, ensemble, clean, whatever you want to go for. And this is where you can import projects or files from your library. That's pretty much it. Cool, so now that we've gone through the basics, let's talk about a couple other things. We have got our session set up and saved to the external hard drive successfully. Now let's do a little recording. We see we have our four audio tracks set up and I have changed the tempo from the default of 120 to 75. We notice that these four audio tracks are all highlighted. I'll click down here and just select audio one. I'm gonna record some snaps, so we'll label that snaps and hit that red hard button. As we can see, things are pretty decent on the game right now. You just want that hitting the green in the yellow. I'm just gonna record some finger snaps. There's probably gonna be a four click count in and then we'll record from there. Here we go. Okay, wow, a couple issues I'm seeing. Number one, definitely clipping like crazy, but let's play that back and see what happens. All right, three issues we've got going on. Number one, we're clipping like crazy. The click was recorded in there, and I can't see this very well because I have old eyes. To address the issue of seeing things, we can highlight right here with our cursor, pull down, and here's a key command for you. If we hit Z, holy smokes, Batman, it makes things crazy big. Let's hit Z again. Okay, let's address the click. If we select our metronome, right click here, let's just do this. Click while playing, we'll turn that off. And let's delete this and start over. Delete. Oh, snap, what if I wanted to save that? Well, to undo something, key command, command Z. To undo and undo, shift command Z. Okay, let's do this again. Play back, still clipping. What the heck, didn't work. Okay, let's click on this and we'll right click and click while playing, we'll turn that off. Delete, back, record. We'll do that and we'll click down here so we have the count in, we do need that, but we'll click right there. This will take care of our problem. All right, I think we may have fixed one of our issues. Let's play that back. Sweet, nothing in the background, but we're still clipping like crazy. How can we fix that? Two ways, if we click right here, and if we go over to our inspector on the game, click right there and just kind of drag down. Holy smoke, we took that down negative 2.4 dB and things are smaller. Let's play it. Still clipping. 
how can we fix this? There's one more thing we can do. This will smooth things out. If we click X, it takes us to our mixer window right here under audio effects. This is called an insert. Pretty soon I'll do a tutorial on analog mixers versus digital and you'll really get more of an understanding. Stay tuned for that. If we click right here, we'll go down to utility and the first thing we see is gain. We'll go to mono because it's a single track and let's pull this down about negative three dB. Play back. Still not quite enough. Let's pull that down again. Negative eight dB might be too much. Let's keep going. Negative 13. Okay, much better. To save everything, Command S. X to go back. This time we will add a track and we'll call this pencil. So what I'll do is take my mechanical pencil and do that for some added effect. Here we go. Cool, hard to see, but here's the amount of lead that came out. Let's make this bigger, play it back. Cool, let's play both of them together. These tracks are a little off. They're not quite synced and on the beat since the metronome wasn't going during the recording. Here's how to fix it. I'm gonna make it real short and quick. We'll highlight the snaps. If we go over here to our inspector, flex and follow, we'll turn that on. And we'll go up here to quantize and then you can choose whichever one of these that you want things to be quantized to. Most likely eighth note would be good. We'll mute that, come down to pencil, same thing. It's off, we'll turn this on, and then we'll go up here to quantize and put that to eighth note. Bam, you're done. Then just play back, make sure everything is to that grid. Now I wanna try an experiment. I'm gonna do some clapping, and then I'm gonna do multiple tracks, add some reverb and delay to see if it sounds like you're maybe in a stadium or at a concert or somewhere where there's a lot of clapping going on. All right, this should be interesting, here we go. It's electric. All right, guys, so let's do this. Let's try this out. I have these two tracks from earlier. Let's select them both. Key command, we'll push H to hide them. We'll click that H, click H again, and they go away. If you want to bring them back up, the H, there they are. So what we'll do is we'll call this one claps one, and then we'll call this claps two. Here we go. We shall record this. I'm gonna to try to keep things back here a little bit so I'm not clipping. If I am, we'll fix that. Here we go. This part here doesn't necessarily need to be on the grid because it's just an experiment. So let's play that back. The click was on. So let's go down here. Cool. So we'll mute that, come to this one here, and we'll do this. Cool. That one's definitely clipping like crazy, so we'll pull this down. We'll have it highlighted, we'll go to gain, and we'll pull that down. Let's see if that's any better. That'll work for this experiment. So let's play it back together. Let's go ahead and add a couple more tracks just to get some more depth in here and see if we can make this experiment work. Key command, option, command in, two, there we go. Claps three, and then claps four. We'll mute those, R to record. Definitely clipping to fix that gain, pull that down a lot, and then we'll mute this. And then on claps four, we'll do the same thing. Although this time I'm gonna like clap way back here.
Let's see. I forgot to do that. Let's see what happens. Still clipping. Okay. All right. Let's unmute everything and see how this sounds. Sounds like unorganized madness. Let's try to do something here. We'll hit X to bring up our mixer. Let's do this. We'll highlight all these. Shift and highlight. If we go here to sends, this is where we're gonna create a bus. Logic automatically does this for you. Go here to bus one, bam, aux one. Let's call this class. So what we're doing is everything, all those four are going to this particular channel. And then we'll uh, add another bus here. And then we'll call, we'll actually add two. We'll do bus two. On this one, we'll do reverb. And then on these, we'll do delay. So bus three, and we'll call that delay. On our reverb, we can come up here to audio effects within reverb. Let's just do chrome verb. Cool. And what we'll do on these, we'll highlight everything. And this is your actual level or your send. So we'll just turn that up a little bit on the reverb. And then we'll create an actual delay over here. We'll go down to delay. And then let's just do this standard one here. Cool. Default settings. And then we'll take this bus three, turn that there. And you know what? I was actually. This is bus one, and then here's bus two for the reverb. Now, let's see what this sounds like. A little boomy, a little echoey because of the reverb. Pretty cool little experiment, huh? That was fun. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to export a bounces, and then we'll wrap things up. If we go to File, Bounce, Project or Section, Key Command, Command B. Right here, you can do PCM, MP3, Resolution, things like that. We'll keep the Normalize off, OK. And we'll call this Logic Base 2, Bounce, and it's done. All right, so this has been the basics of Logic 10.7. The basics. Yes, that's what this video was about. It was my goal to at least show you some of the ins and outs and get you to a point of where you're able to do some basic recording and understand gain stage and keeping things at the negative 12, negative 18, or just bumping that yellow on your gain signal. If you are looking for further and more in-depth tutorials on Logic 10.7, including some of the spatial audio and the sequencer, I'll be doing some of those in the future. Wrapping things up, I really appreciate you watching up to this point from the beginning to this. I'm trying to keep things short and informative, but if you happen to learn something today or found any value in today's content, if you're new, thanks for stopping by. If you've been with me for a while, I greatly appreciate you. If you haven't yet, think about smashing that subscribe button as it gives me a lot of inspiration and motivation to keep moving forward and making better content for you. All right, I'll catch you tomorrow when we are making beats within loops in Apple's logic. All right, catch you then.